Sakura is way stronger than you think. Lover or hater, Sakura has always been a divisive character in the anime community. Often dismissed as useless or overshadowed by her teammates Naruto and Sasuke, Sakura's true strength is rarely given the credit it deserves. But today, I'm gonna break down why Sakura is one of the most underrated characters in the Naruto series when it comes to strength and give her the credit that she deserves. From her raw physical power to her strategic mind, Sakura has consistently proved herself as a formidable ninja. Sakura's physical strength is no joke. Trained by Tsunade, one of the legendary Sanin, Sakura mastered the art of chakra control to amplify her physical attacks. This training gave her superhuman strength, capable of shattering boulders, buildings, and even enemy defenses with a single punch. It's not just raw power, it's a perfect blend of precision, timing, and chakra focus. Every blow she delivers carries the weight of years of dedication. Many fans overlook how much dedication it takes to master chakra control to this level. Remember, Tsunade herself said that this skill requires intense discipline and precision, something Sakura excels at. Naruto and Sasuke may have raw power, but Sakura's strength is rooted in the tireless training she put in. She had to push her body and mind to the limit, something many don't truly appreciate. Unlike Naruto, who had the innate power of the Ninetales, or Sasuke with the Sharingan, Sakura's growth has been built up from the ground up through years of hard work. Let's not forget how her strength plays a pivotal role in battles. Her ability to deal devastating blows is often the deciding factor in team fights. Take the fight against Sasori for example. While it was a two-person team up with Granny Chio, Sakura's strength was what allowed them to break through Sasori's iron and defenses. Sasori's puppets were nearly invulnerable to most attacks, yet Sakura's raw strength was able to break through them, something no one else on her team could do. That's not just power, that's tactical precision and timing at work. Even in more recent battles, Sakura's strength continues to be a game changer. In the fourth Great Ninja War, she took on the monstrous Kaguya alongside with Naruto and Sasuke, and with just a single punch, she could damage Kaguya enough to be able to get her teammates to seal her. It's clear that Sakura's physical power isn't just about brute force, it's about the control and focus she brings to every battle. And it's not just her offensive capabilities. Sakura's superhuman strength also makes her one of the best medics in the world, as Tsunade's teachings enabled her to heal and fight simultaneously. This dual ability to protect her comrades and decimate enemies when needed is what truly sets her apart. Some fans may still dismiss her as just the support in the Naruto series, but when you break down her abilities, it's clear. Sakura is one of the most powerful characters in the series. Her strength is a testament to her unwavering determination, and it's about time people recognize just how much she brings to the table. The bottom line, never underestimate the power of Sakura Haruno. Beyond her physical prowess, Sakura is a medical ninjutsu prodigy. She doesn't just heal wounds, she creates antidotes, performs life-saving surgeries, and has mastered Tsunade's ultimate technique, the strength of a hundred seal. This ability doesn't just add to her combat strength, it's a game changer. It is what allows her to turn the tides of battle, not just by fighting, but by keeping her allies in the fight. Her medical skills aren't just about patching up cuts or bruises, they're vital to her team's survival. Throughout the fourth great ninja war, Sakura proved that her talents extend far beyond the battlefield as a fighter. She kept countless allies alive, including Naruto when he was critically injured by Madara. Her medical ninjutsu not only saved Naruto's life, but also ensured he would continue the fight, which had a direct impact on the outcome of the war. Without her, many key battles would have been lost. She's not just a healer, she's the backbone that keeps her team fighting. But it's not all glory. Being a medical ninja comes with immense responsibility. Medical ninjas are expected to keep themselves safe at all costs. They're not just warriors, they are the last line of defense for those who fight. If a medical ninja falls, the entire unit's chances of survival drops drastically. This added pressure weighs heavily on Sakura. She knows that one wrong move, one missed opportunity could cost lives. And in many of her missions, that burden is only intensified by her position as one of the few medical ninja capable of keeping the frontline ninja alive. Furthermore, it's important to recognize that medical ninja have to be versatile. They are often expected to perform surgeries in the heat of battle, create complex antidotes for poisons or toxins, and even counter enemy ninjutsu with their medical knowledge. Sakura isn't just good under pressure, she's brilliant. She uses her deep understanding of anatomy and chakra control to make split second decisions that save lives, making her one of the most valuable members of any team. Her mastery of the strength of a hundred seal, Tsunade's ultimate technique, takes this a step further. By storing chakra for years, Sakura can unleash an overwhelming surge of power when necessary. But what many may miss is that this technique doesn't just provide healing, it accelerates her recovery time, allowing her to return to the battlefield faster and with more power. While others may struggle to keep up, Sokka can heal, rest, and jump back into action, maintaining her presence and effectiveness throughout long, grueling battles. And let's not forget the mental fortitude this role requires. Sakura's position as both a powerful fighter and a medical ninja means that she has to balance her emotions, always prioritizing the lives of her comrades above her own. In battle, she often has to make decisions in the blink of an eye, weighing the risks of saving one life while knowing that others may be in danger. This dual responsibility, being a protector and healer, has shaped Sakura into someone who can face any challenge with unparalleled resolve. By 
looking at Sakura's medical skills, it's clear she's one of the most well-rounded and reliable characters in the series. Her healing abilities don't just save lives, they make her indispensable, ensuring that her team remains strong enough to defeat even the most powerful enemies. In a way, her healing powers embody the strength of her character, always pushing forward, always putting others before herself, and never giving up. And I myself as a YouTuber don't want to give up on promoting my YouTube channel, so here's your chance to like the video and to subscribe for more content just like this. You won't regret it. Sakura's growth throughout the series isn't just a testament to her training, but also to her emotional resilience. Starting as a young girl, overwhelmed by her insecurities, she often deferred to Naruto and Sasuke. But as the series progressed, Sakura transformed into a steadfast, self-assured leader capable of standing on her own. One of the best examples of her development is the fight against Sasori. This battle was more than just a showcase of her physical strength, it was a mental chess game. Sakura anticipated Sasori's moves, dodged his lethal attacks, and helped Chiyo capitalize on her openings. Her precise chalk or control allowed her to evade poison while shattering Sasori's defenses with her sheer power. By the end of the fight, Sakura had proven herself as a tactician, a fighter, and a survivor. Let's not underestimate what that means. Sasori was a S-ranked criminal, one of the Akaski and a master puppeteer who killed a Kazekage. Sakura stepping into that fight and not just surviving but winning, something even veterans would struggle with, highlights her growth as both a ninja and a strategist. Emotionally speaking, Sakura's arc is complex. Her love for Sasuke often left her vulnerable, but it also became a source of her strength. Her decision to confront Sasuke despite the emotional turmoil it caused shows immense bravery. Imagine facing someone you care deeply for, knowing they become a danger to everyone you hold dear. That level of emotional conflict could paralyze most, but Sakura pressed on. Now, many criticize her for not delivering the final blow when she had the chance. Even I've done so, and I still stand by it. But here's the thing, Sakura isn't defined by perfection. Her hesitation doesn't make her weak, it makes her human. It's easy to say what someone should have done in the heat of the moment, but Sakura's flaw here is what makes her relatable. It's this mix of vulnerability and resolve that keeps her grounded amidst the godlike powers of her teammates. By the fourth great ninja war, Sakura had matured into a ninja capable of balancing raw power with emotional clarity. Her leadership of the medical corps saved countless lives, and her ability to stay composed under immense pressure speaks volumes about her mental fortitude. Sakura's journey is about growth. She starts as someone unsure of her place in Team 7 and evolves into a vital member who not only supports but stands alongside Naruto and Sasuke. Her emotional and mental development is what makes her one of the most grounded, relatable, and ultimately underrated characters in the series, at least to a certain extent. She isn't perfect, but that's precisely why her story resonates. So why does Sakura get so much hate? A big part of it boils down to comparison. Naruto and Sasuke are essentially destined for greatness, they're the reincarnations of Inner and Ashura, wielding god tier powers, and their narrative arcs are structured to make them larger than life heroes. Against that backdrop, Sakura is portrayed as a more grounded, human, and by design, less flashy. Another reason is her early portrayal. Sakura started out as emotionally driven, often dependent on others, and fixated on feelings for Sasuke. For many fans, these traits defined her, overshadowing the growth she later achieved. Unfortunately, first impressions are hard to shake, and that perception stuck for a lot of viewers. But here's the thing, Sakura was never written to be a god level ninja like her teammates. She was meant to be the human anchor in Team 7, the one who showed that sheer hard work, determination, and discipline could still shine alongside talent and destiny. Sakura wasn't born with a Ninetales power or a Sharingan. She earned her strength, and that's something that's often overlooked. This grounded role doesn't make her weak or useless. It makes her relatable. In fact, it makes her successes all the more impressive. Sakura worked her way up from being a character fans saw as ordinary to someone capable of standing alongside two of the strongest ninja in the entire series. That's not a failure, that's a triumph. That being said, let's address the elephant in the room. As much respect as I've given her throughout this video, Sakura does suffer from some writing issues. Moments where her development could have shined often get overshadowed by poorly executed dialogue, underwhelming decisions, or a lack of follow through from the writers. These flaws make it easy for people to dismiss her accomplishments accomplishments even though many of them are fully warranted. The problem is that people are quick to let those flaws define her entirely, ignoring everything she achieved, especially in Shippuden. If fans took the time to reassess her contributions objectively, they'd say she's far more impactful than she's often given credit for. No, she's not on Naruto or Sasuke's level, but she's undeniably in the higher tier of ninjas by the end of the series. And let's be real, if Boruto era Sakura fought one tail cloak Naruto from part 1, I'm confident she'd come out on top. But here's the thing, because of the animosity people People hold towards her character, they'd probably argue against that, ignoring how much stronger she became by the series' end. It's the bias that often prevents fans from acknowledging her growth and power fairly. In the end, Sakura's flaws don't erase her growth. If anything, they make her journey more relatable. While she may not be everyone's favorite character, there's no denying that she deserves more credit than she's often given, both for her physical strength and her emotional resilience. And again, I don't really like her. 
as I'm sure a lot of you don't either. But we have to put the bias aside and look at both pros and cons of her character. And in terms of being a capable ninja, she certainly filled that role in the later parts of the story and I just wanted to highlight that for those not aware or just blind to her positives. So what do you guys think? Does Sakura deserve more credit than we're giving her or do you think she is weaker than I'm letting on? And what reason do you have to support your claim? I love to get y'all's thoughts so let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this, click the card you see here which will take you to my video being more negative towards Sakura, highlighting the toxic relationship between her and Naruto. I'm the curly haired Okage and I hope you all have an amazing and blessed day. Peace.